Welcome to the U World Order Showcase Podcast. Your host, Jill Hart, the coach's alchemist. Couldn't be more excited to have you join us today. On this podcast, we celebrate the champions of change, the up and coming life, health and transformational coaches who are fearlessly stepping forward to make a difference in the world. Get ready for inspiring stories, practical tips, and powerful moments that will motivate you to make a positive change in your life and those around you. We're happy to have you join us on this incredible journey as we dive into the world of life, health, and transformational coaches who are lighting up the path towards a better tomorrow. Hi, and welcome to the U World Order Showcase podcast. Today, we are speaking with Jane Lewis. Jane is a teacher, coach, mentor, and healer who helps people find the fastest routes to deep mental, emotional, and sometimes even physical healing using a set of teachings called HUNA, the secret spiritual healing and life teachings of the ancient Hawaiians. Welcome to the show, Jane. I'm so excited to learn more about this. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So tell us your story. How did you get started? Did you always know these ancient teachings? No. (laughs) No. Um, They're on the other side of the planet from where I live because I'm based in the UK and they're from Hawaii. Um, No, it started with clinical depression. I had clinical depression in my 40s and I looked around for different alternatives, alternative ways to, to healing. And I tried a number, um, you know, psychodrama and you name it, I tried it. Uh, and didn't really get on with them. I didn't want to take the drugs because I'd had a uh, Valium when I was a kid and it didn't go well. Um, and somebody told me about NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. So I found an NLP school and I liked them. I studied with them. And they taught a number of things, including hypnosis as well as NLP and this thing called HUNA, which what's that? And then they started to do demos and teaching a little bit from HUNA. And I thought, oh, that's nice. I like that. And then I realized that I could go to Hawaii to study it. And Even better. Uh, I, I mean, you know, what what could you possibly say, particularly since it was one of the places in Polynesia I'd never been to. And I'm a bit of an Elvis fan on the on the side. And I figured I could make it tax deductible. So why wouldn't you? So I went and I was only going to go once just to just to see what it was like and check out Hawaii. And and that was back in 99. And I thought, I'll come back one more time. There's some, a few things, a few pieces that are missing. So I went back one more time and I think I've been now 41 times for no it's more than that actually um so I usually go twice a year didn't go during covid because uh we, we weren't allowed into the states because we were too diseased <laughs> um, well, we were too diseased and didn't want to let anybody yeah. know <laughs> so um so yeah so that's how I that's how I started with it and I always say that NLP uh NLP really started the process of me moving out of depression it gave me the ability to really look at my thoughts and my thought patterns and get control of my thinking but it's huna that's kept me out Uh, when i saw the psychiatrist and got the diagnosis she said oh she said uh depression clinical depression she said it's like heart attacks once you have it once you'll probably get it again and that was in 1997 i think 1998 and I haven't had it again, so it's worked. And I think, then started teaching in 2005 in Hawaii. You're, yeah, you're teaching now. and Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you taught Donna, who whose episode you will have listened to by this time, because I interviewed her yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So she is a lovely lady. When it... um. I lost my train of thought. I 
hate it when that happens. Mm -hmm. Clinical depression mm -hmm. in the in the nineties, the late nineties. There weren't there weren't a whole lot of options. In fact, mm -hmm. it was it was kind of a a time when you just like went to the doctor and whatever the doctor said, that's what you did. And instead of today where, you know, you first you Google it mm -hmm. <laughs> and you scare yourself half to death. And then mm -hmm. you go to the doctor and you, you, yeah. you try to tell him a thing or two. And then they tell you, get away from Google. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but so we've moved to a point where there's a lot of different modalities uh, oh. out there to help people that are struggling with depression. And, okay. you know, just as a safety note, anybody who is struggling with depression that's listening to us do seek medical attention. Mm. There's There are helplines available for people that um, are, are in clinical depression and, and need help. Don't don't suffer with it and help is available. Okay, so that's, Absolutely. we're not doctors. I think the other <laughs> thing to say is that, I mean, in the 90s, it was still shameful. Mental health, uh, oh, any yeah. kind of mental health issues were shameful. And the, the, the wonderful thing is that there isn't the shame around it now. You can, you know, you can confidently go to, go to, go and seek medical help. Whether you choose to take it, it's a different option. Um, but you know, I, I chose I chose not to go down the the the, mm -hmm. uh, the pharmaceutical route, but that was my personal choice. It wasn't necessarily the recommended choice for me. Uh, yeah, but now we have we can seek medical help and we can get medical intervention if we need it. You know, sometimes a pharmaceutical intervention is really the best decision for mm -hmm. critical. Um, critical change, a quick critical change oh, yeah. versus, uh, you know, the alternative, which is sometimes death because, yeah. you know, people just get trapped in these thoughts and they're not real that mm -hmm. we, we weren't really exploring whether things were real or not in the nineties. Yeah. No. <laughs> and our thoughts create, create our reality. I mean, that how we think about things and reframe things can really change the trajectory of our lives and and surprisingly quickly well that's when nlp was so helpful for me because it got me to look at the way that i thought about myself in particular the world in yeah but particularly how i thought about myself and the more i turned my lens on that and found and discovered that, yeah, I had some pretty negative thoughts and that I could change them because nobody ever told me I could change them. Right? You know how? <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, you can change them and this is how. Like, wow. You just, <laughs> I know this is going to be super simplified, but it worked for me. And it was just I, the idea that I had permission to change the way I thought about things. I can, and Marissa Pierce says, tell yourself a better lie. And I just love that. It's like, you know, they're all lies. It doesn't, it, we we all perceive things differently. Yeah. The same event we will perceive differently. So you can make up whatever you want around it. I choose these days to make it, you know, great. It's yeah, a great absolutely. experience. <laughs> absolutely. It's even if I, even if you walk away all banged up and bruised, it doesn't matter. You can still tell yourself it was great. Yeah. And I got these great trophies. Look at those bruises. <laughs> Which sounds yeah. silly on the outside, but you know, for your mental health, it does wonders. It does. Yeah. And you know, fake it till you make it. It works. Yeah. It certainly worked for me anyway. <laughs> Yeah. So tell me, what what is Huna? I, I, I get it's like the teachings of the ancient Hawaiians, but I mean, how would you get involved with it? And, and what what kinds of things does it include? So it's a very complete 
system. Uh, it's you can, you know, if you if you pull apart any spiritual system or many spiritual systems, you'll find different components. Um, particularly if you're looking at the um, the indigenous the indigenous teachings of around the world. So, Huna has we don't we don't work with herbs very much but there is a herbal side there's a faith healing side uh there's um we work with prayer uh and we work with different ways of releasing old emotions anger sadness fear guilt which have been suppressed for a long time we do ancestral ancestral <laughs> if i could say it, ancestral karmic past life uh, healing work uh, we do dream time we chant so we have a very com oh and we have a huge and we have a, an energy system and then a lineage of, around energy kind of similar to reiki but different mm -hmm. but reiki is the nearest parallel if people have heard of anything they'll have heard of reiki um very powerful it comes from the highest feminine the, the highest feminine energy on the planet so it's very powerful so it's a very complete system that enables you to develop spiritually mentally emotionally even physically um i mean the, from a hawaiian from a polynesian uh, point of view there's no difference between spirituality and yourself we're all spiritual beings we're all spiritual so they don't have some of the same hang-ups that we often do in the West about, oh, I'm not sure if I'm spiritual and is that spiritual and do I want to be spiritual? It's, we're just spiritual beings. <laughs> Get over it. Um, so, yeah, there's the healing, healing work uh, done using connection with source, using the energy of source um, and it's brilliant for all manner of transformation. So you develop the spiritual self, uh, spiritual consciousness, but also getting rid of baggage that has been holding you back or that is, is upsetting or uh, that makes you angry. Ho'oponopono, forgiveness, big part of, um, of Huna. And, and how does that forgiveness work? So Ho'oponopono is forgiveness of others, really. Um, and a lot of people, if people have heard of it, often they've heard of it through Joe Vitale. There's as many different versions of Ho'oponopono as there probably are Hawaiian families in the islands. So it's not that one way is right and one way is wrong. They're just different ways of different ways of teaching it. Um, but Ho'oponopono generally is forgiving others. Uh, Self-forgiveness, the the tools and techniques for, for removing anger, sadness, fear, guilt, shame. Take out shame and actually a lot of the work of self-forgiveness is done. Um, so that's the difference between Ho'oponopono, forgiving others, and as I said, the, the, the other side, which is self-forgiveness. Um, I just help my clients release shame and do a few other, a few, a few other exercises which sort of huna based but maybe maybe not too much we work a lot with the elements and uh, in the huna system that the lineage that i teach and have studied which is an old lineage uh it goes back uh over a hundred generations which makes it mm, that we can trace and we can trace it um our, our kumu are the teacher the head of the lineage if you like the 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 keeper of the lineage um, he's done the research in the Bishop Museum in uh, in in online, yeah, Bishop Museum because it's all now it's all now online, um, and we can trace the lineage back over a hundred generations. So we're talking at least two thousand years uh, in terms of how back how far back these teachings go. So it's not it's not new. <laughs> it's it's really not new. Um, and there is a lot in the lineage to do with the elements. So we have five elements in this, in our lineage anyway, uh, air, fire, water, earth, and spirit. Uh, in the Hawaiian system, they have metal and wood. Uh, sorry, in the Chinese system, they have metal and wood. 
the Hawaiians didn't have metal. There is no metal in the Hawaiian ground. So metal was would never be an element for them. Um, so different systems around the world, but that's the Hawaiian one. And we do a lot of work. We, we, we do a lot of work helping people learn how to utilize the elements for their own development, utilize the elements for their own transformation and for healing work. And we teach them right right off the bat we teach them how to heal others using using the elements to to heal others so we also treat, teach dream interpretation uh it includes um great great process for resolving internal conflicts so ho'oponopono will help you resolve external conflicts conflicts with other people um uh the what we call the kiave process is a process for resolving internal internal conflicts. And in fact, I was running I was running um, uh, a call last night, a, a webinar last night, taking people through the Kiave process, and they were quite shocked to find how quickly and easily and profoundly it worked. So these tools and techniques, they do. People are people are always like, I can't believe that happened so quick. And and are you, are you sure it's gone? It's gone unless you choose to recreate it. So the 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 process is because they use the energy of higher self, the energy of of source. The processes work really really fast. And you, you said something very interesting there. Unless you choose to recreate it, mm -hmm. because we have so much power. And you, when you talk about shame, shame is the prison we create ourselves. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There, there might have been a time when we let other people create that cage for us, but it always starts with us. How we project ourselves is what we're going to get back in a lot of cases. And if in different times, if it, if weakness was perceived, <laughs> you would perish, but it, it you really can create your own reality. And you, mm. you can change the reality around you by shifting what you think about situations. Like it goes back to when we were talking about um, you create your own reality, but you you can choose to perceive things however you wish to perceive them. Tell yourself a better lie. If you'd been telling yourself that a situation was horrible and terrible and you were the victim and it was awful and there's all the shame and all this other stuff attached to it. And then other people were involved in the situation and they looked at it differently. If you change how you perceive it, it changes how they perceived it too. Absolutely. There's science behind that one. It's Absolutely. so interesting. So you really can time travel. Yes, <laughs> you can. <laughs> or yeah, you travel know, I, on different timelines, I guess. <laughs> I, I mean, I I love the fact that that you know so much, so many of the ideas of the ancients, the teachings of the ancients, um, modern science is now is now proving them. Basically, is now is now demonstrating that they are uh, that they that they they have a solid basis in the ancients wouldn't have seen it necessarily as science, but they have a solid basis in science. Um, for years, I mean, when I first started on this journey, people would talk about energy. And I was, I'm, I'm a pseudoscientist. I've always been a pseudoscientist. I like science, but I wasn't allowed to do it at school to an advanced level because I wasn't good enough at it. Um, and, you know, in the, in the early nineties, when I was, um, I actually studied craniosacral therapy and they talk about energy and I think, ah, energy, can't see it. Yeah, it doesn't exist. And certainly when I started with Huna, as I got familiar with energy and I started to understand energy and believe that it did exist, still other people came across a lot of people who didn't believe it. And even now I'll come across, particularly if I go into the corporate world, people will go, energy, can't see it. Well, no, you can't. You can't see electricity either. What you it see is energy. Is electricity is energy. It is. Exactly. People exactly. don't 
recognize that it's just an exchange of electrons and it's the power it's the it's the because it's the mechanism that holds things together is energy i tr i personally believe that god is energy it it, yeah. it 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 source whatever you want to call it that exists as energy and it holds us all together and it causes the physicality of our existence to present yeah without it there would be nothing there's yeah. only energy and void source and void and source is the only energy is the only way for creation to happen yeah so, absolutely and the and the scientists have demonstrated it you know everything it's all energy everything and, yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't it 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 doesn't no no more is created and nothing is ever lost yeah. it just changes shape yeah it's extraordinary it's extraordinary so yes i love the fact that the that modern science is is proving for <laughs> so many of the teachings of the ancients I love it too. I, it's it, it's exciting to me to see these these old concepts mm. being brought forth and being embraced by a larger number of people. Mm -hmm. It's like it's been squashed for a lot of centuries now, but it wasn't that long ago when Hawaii was was able to just exist without being uh, overcome by modern western the western world and i think people well, it was a king it was it was a kingdom in its it was a kingdom in it by the time of uh, oh, king kamehameha united the islands to it to become a kingdom in its own right so very strong culture um but that was in the early 1900s i mean that I know we're in 2020, it'll be 2024 when this comes out, but in the 1900s wasn't that long ago, 125 yeah. years. I mean, it's yeah, I mean, the he, the, the, you know, the United, the Captain Cook rocked up uh, in the, what, late, just, just at the, t the end of the 18th century. Mm -hmm. uh, and by 1820, I think the writing was beginning to be on the wall for the Hawaiian kingdom. It, it continued, but I think they were beginning to understand that their culture was in danger of being lost. They did what they could to preserve it. The, um, King David Kalakaua did what he could to, to preserve it, but the writing was kind of on the wall because all the big powers want, wanted a piece. Uh, the, the Brits wanted it. The French wanted it. The U.S. wanted it, um, and several others. So. And, and Japan got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, in a very rather different way. <laughs> I know, and not a shot was fired. <laughs> yeah, I spent some yeah, time in Hawaii it's... as a as a teenager, and oh, really? I, yeah, I loved it. It was it was a wonderful experience. Yeah. Where did you go? Where did you Where did you spend time? I I spent time on Oahu. I went to the University of Hawaii for a couple of years, and mm. my dad was in the military. He was mm -hmm. a naval officer, stationed at um, I, I I lost it. That's not Pearl Harbor. A oh, Barber's Point. There, oh. got it. <laughs> um, it was. It was a lovely experience. Yeah, great place to spend teenage years. <laughs> yeah, I was into swimming. I was a lifeguard. And it was it was a good life. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So how does one work with you and, and how how does that kind of look? And and what do you do with people? Do, are you strictly teaching or are no. you coaching? No, I I do, I guess I do a mix. So some of the, some of the work I do is pure, I call it coaching. 
Uh, I guess sometimes it strays borderline into therapy, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a qualified clinical hypnotherapist, so I'm comfortable with that. Um, but I, mostly it's coaching work and using the tools and techniques to help people get to where they want to be, get rid of the blocks they want to get rid of and get the transformation that they want. And that that's across all areas of life. So that's one part of what I do. And then the other part of what I do is teaching. So I run, I, I teach in Hawaii. I teach on the uh, HUNA programs in, in Hawaii. And I run my own HUNA programs in the UK. I'm, I'm what we call a, a kumu HUNA. So I've, I've been, um, it's like a, like, it's like an honorary PhD. I have a real PhD. Um, and, and then I have, and I'm a kumu as well. So I run courses in the UK on HUNA. Um, and I do programs which are a kind of mixture of teaching HUNA. So teaching people how to use the techniques and group coaching where I'm taking them through different processes, different programs. So I'm right in the middle of one at the moment, which is, um, I call it release and reclaim, which is for women to release the baggage and reclaim their power and step into their, their true, their true feminine leadership connected with the, with, with the divine feminine. Um, so that's, and that's a combination of teaching and coaching. Um, so, I do all of those and I do one-on-one -on -one work and I do group work. Uh, but for me, in person it's, and online. Yeah. 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 And for me, it's, it's really, it's all about healing at some level. And sometimes it's, uh, sometimes it, 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 sometimes it's physical. I don't do that much physical healing, um, but certainly across all areas of life where, where things just aren't working as you want them to be working and taking them yeah. out to that next level. Do you find that people tend to heal physically once they get spiritually and mentally healed? Yes, quite often. I mean, I've got a client at the moment who she's been working with me. We've been doing, we've been using HUNA processes for um, really at a mental and emotional level. Um, but she's finding that things are changing for her in terms of, one of one of her challenges diabetes we haven't been working specifically on diabetes at all but what she's finding is that her uh her relationship with food and the relationship with the diabetes is changing and you know she's talking to her doctor about being able to reduce uh reduce the medication she's on so yeah That's exciting I love when I hear stories like that because it's just like our, our minds are so powerful and the combination of, of the connection between our minds, which are like the, the thought processing centers and our spirit, which is really the energy that gives it power yeah. when you can get them lined up and possibilities yeah. are endless. <laughs> Absolutely. And 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 it's just so one it's it's just so wonderful to it's just so wonderful when you see that happening for somebody. Um and how empowering it is for them because it really does allow them to take back control of their own life. Yeah. And it to me it's really exciting to see how many women are are stepping into this. Women for many centuries at least in the modern world. And, and this isn't like universal because in some other cultures, women are more highly respected that in, in Western circles for a lot of centuries, women were second-class citizens. Their thoughts and opinions didn't matter. They were the weaker sex. And, and that's just not proving to be true, honestly. <laughs> No, and but it's still something we're having to fight. <laughs> it is definitely, but the fight, the fight is making progress. I feel I, our moms were pretty close to the same age, but I, our moms were really had to struggle with um, getting out from under the bondage of having 
a male over over them yeah yeah women yeah. used to go to college to find husbands they didn't go to college to get an education now there are more women getting higher degrees than men oh really yeah mm -hmm. yeah I, the, i'm not i'm not sure how it is in the uk i'm not sure how it would be in the uk uh, it's that way in the u.s it, yeah. it it's more likely that you'll run into a woman who has a, a higher degree than mm. you will find men mm. and the numbers of women going to college is much higher than men going to college mm -hmm. yeah. and they, they're completing it they're completing degrees at a, right. a higher higher Get level yeah. Yeah. so it's it's just kind of interesting to me to see the changes and and to watch how other generations are like are are picking up the torch and and stepping into embracing being a woman and embracing what it means to be a woman and to to accept power for themselves instead of being victims and weak and having to depend on other people to help them they they can help themselves and and create these amazing life experiences that really enrich everyone around them and in yeah. turn the whole world i think i think that definitely is changing i think women women are much more likely to take steps to reclaim reclaim their power and to i i, I do stuff around the connecting with the divine feminine and um there's you know women are genuinely interested in that and how to as leaders when i'm working with leaders how to come from that feminine power and not try and be a man in a dress um it's you know it's that it's, it's, it's a challenge different, different type of power uh, and it is a challenge because the corporate world particularly still doesn't there's still certainly in the uk there are big areas in the corporate world that um the behavior towards women is not yet what it could be or should be um but women women reclaiming their power is 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 such a beautiful thing to see it really is and and it gives a certain amount of freedom to the the group of women and i i i have always been a powerful person mm. it's just it's who i am and I can remember when I was young, having people tell me I was bossy, having people tell me, you know, be quiet and go sit in the corner, yeah. <laughs> you know, stop, stop yeah. asking questions, stop speaking yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it, it doesn't do a lot for your psyche to have people tell you that. And we've reached a point where it's just like, yeah, if you're, if you're a dynamic go-getter little girl, go, don't yeah. let anybody put basket over your life just yeah absolutely em no, embrace absolutely. who you are mm. and, and and it's okay you know we've reached a point where we don't have to be liked by everybody it's okay <laughs> you know? and I think and some of that I think does also come it, it's one of the benefits of moving into uh um you know moving into the third stage of life um I I enjoy being a wise, I, I enjoy being an older woman. I enjoy being a wise elder. Um, but I, and I see young women, I see a lot of young women who are much more feisty and owning their power. But I also see a lot of women and I work with a lot of women who still question their power and their right to um, talk about their opinions and their beliefs. And it's, great when they do and when you get to my age it's just so liberating it really is <laughs> I, I embrace being a crone it's just absolutely like, you don't you just don't care there was a line in a movie i, I think it was like fried green tomatoes or something where uh -huh the woman's like i'm i'm old and i have better insurance yeah. <laughs> she's trying to take a car spot she rams somebody <laughs> yeah <laughs> what are you gonna do to me <laughs> exactly 
<laughs> I've seen I've seen so much. And, and you just get to a point where, you know, not all battles are worth fighting. <laughs> you deserve your energy. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> no. So Jane, um, how do yeah. how do people get in touch with you? How do they find out about your courses over in Hawaii if they wanted to join you there or if they just wanted to like get in touch with you so, and work with you? So the courses the so the courses in Hawaii I'm teaching for the empowerment partnership. So um I don't run I don't run my own courses in Hawaii. Uh <laughs> the courses in UK and I say in UK because I run live course uh, uh, they're all live. I run um, uh, in-person courses in the UK, but I also do online courses. So, and I've I have people from the States, Canada, Australia, uh, mainland Europe um, come to to those ones. So you can go. I've got a couple of websites. The easy one to pronounce is the Secret Art of Huna. And Huna is H U N A dot com. Um, there's also Dr. Jane Lewis dot com. Um, you can find me on Facebook and LinkedIn, where I'm backslash Jane P. Lewis. Um, Jane Lewis is a very common name in the UK. So uh, I use Dr. Jane Lewis quite often, and I use my middle initial quite often. Um, and I have a YouTube channel called secret art of huna and you can find uh videos that i've done about huna there so ho'oponopono um but be careful because the ads may come in in the middle because this is youtube <laughs> <laughs> um, so ho'oponopono um expanded awareness using the peripheral vision um different sorts of release work so uh, you can find them on the youtube channel Awesome. Awesome. So what's the one thing you'd like to leave the audience with today? I think it is that really it's all an illusion. We have such power to change our thinking, but most of the time we're living in a bubble. We live in our bubble and the bubble's very small, but when you allow yourself to step out of the bubble, and see the real extent of possibility. This world has so much possibility to offer. And that possibility, in that possibility lies personal possibility. And when you get to that place, it's empowering. So personal possibility. Love that. <laughs> there, there is just so much available to us. Thank you so much, Jane, for joining me. I will make sure that the links are in the show notes below. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure talking to you, Jill. Real pleasure. You too. Thank you so much for tuning in to another empowering episode of the You World Order Showcase podcast. We hope you've enjoyed hearing from our incredible life, health, and transformational coaches who are making a profound impact on the world. Remember, change begins with you, and you have the power to transform your life and the lives of others. If you want to take that next step and unlock your true potential, visit thecoachesalchemist.com where you can find the three ways we can help you for free to spin your talent into gold with clarity, a system, and a plan. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an inspiring episode. And if you enjoyed today's show, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us reach more people with our positive message. Stay connected with us on social media for updates, behind the scenes content, and upcoming guest announcements. You can find us on Facebook at the U World Order or simply visit thecoachesalchemist.com. 